All right. You know, last week, we, we got into some controversial things. Well, I got into some controversial things. <laughs> and um, some things that are not widely taught in the body of Christ. I've never heard a sermon taught on 2 Corinthians 3, specifically, uh, I think, believe it was verse 7. Um, I believe there's a lot of fear to teach on something like this. There's a lot of things in the Bible that just are not taught on. Okay, and I do not want to be one of those pastors, okay, that's afraid to teach on something. It's one thing to, I, there's things where I'm like, Lord, I don't have full revelation on that. And if I don't have revelation on something, I will tell you flat out, hey, I don't know exactly what this means. Let's study it out. Let's research it. But we're, that's what we taught on, Second Corinthians, because last week during worship, I was just sitting there and I had my message all planned out and everything. And the Lord just impressed upon me to talk about Second Corinthians chapter 3. And um, I know it was from him. because You know when you feel that, that urging of the Holy Spirit. So that's what we're going we're gonna to get into going along with discipleship, um, new covenant discipleship. So if you have your Bibles, you can turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. I believe we're going to have it up on the board as well. And this would be a time to kind of get out your highlighters, your pens, things like that. Because we are going to get into some meat today. They're, they're, they're <clears throat> meat is, is when we get into like the deep things. And we're going to try to make it simple. It's not, it's not to where we can't understand them. But this is a concept that is, uh, um, it is a little meaty, okay? <clears throat> so <clears throat> we, we talked about like just kind of doing a little, little bit of a review, but it's going to be kind of mixed in. We talked about the Ten Commandments. When I first got saved, I remember, I'm going to give my testimony concerning the Ten Commandments. I had a zeal for the Ten Commandments because I thought that they were, they were given to us to, to live by. They're a good moral code, right? They are a good moral code, for sure. And I thought that, you know, that's, once you got saved, all of your past sins were forgiven. But once you're saved, then you've got to do your best to live by the Ten Commandments. That's, that's kind of what I was taught. <clears throat> and what I grabbed onto. And I remember printing out a copy of the Ten Commandments. And I put them in a special place. And I told the Lord, I'm going to obey these. Totally ignorant of, of what the law was meant to do, what it was given for. And, <clears throat> and I said, Lord, I'm going to do my best to obey these. I'm going to do my best. I know this is what your standard. And I, I just failed. Over years of failure and failure. And one time, I finally came to a place that I almost, I almost had a mental breakdown trying to live up to this standard, because it's, it's impossible. <clears throat> and that got me on a path of, of, you know, finding out who I am in Christ and righteousness, the righteousness that we've been given. And what I've come to find, though, is that a lot of churches still hold on to teaching that the Ten Commandments is a moral code that you're supposed to live by. It's not. That's not what it was designed for. And we're going to get into the fact that now we can live, we live from a, we live in a, forgive me for lack of better terms, but we can live above the Ten Commandments, okay, empowered by His grace. And that's what we're going to look at. We're going to start in 2 Corinthians 3. I'm going to try to go through the whole chapter. I'm going to read it, but I'm going to, I'm going to hit highlighted verses. <clears throat> so I'm starting at 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. Do we begin again to commend ourselves, or do we need, as some others, epistles of, of condemnation? Uh, commendation to you or letters of commendation from you. You are our epistle, written in our hearts, known and read by all men. Clearly, you are an epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God. Not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh, that is, of the heart. And we're going to get into that in a minute. And we have such trust through Christ toward God, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God. That's, that's really important to acknowledge. That's one of the verses you might want to highlight. Our sufficiency is not from us. It is from God. Who has also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant. Not of the letter, but of the spirit. Now, now here's what we're really going to dig into today. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. But if the ministry of death, written and engraved on stones, so I'm going to stop right there. <clears throat> the only part of the Levitical law, the only part of the law that was written and engraved on stone was what? 
the Ten Commandments. The other laws <clears throat> that, that were written were written on, on, on scrolls. They were not engraved on stone. The, law, the Ten Commandments is the beginning of the law. It's actually the foundation of the law. It's the pinnacle of the law. They're not separate. It's not like the Ten Commandments, then you have Levitical law. See, a lot of, a lot of Christians have, have kind of separated them. That when we talk about law, like animal sacrifices, priestly duties, the, the washings in the temple, the utensils, the different ministry inside the temple, they separate it. They are not separate. The Ten Commandments and the whole Levitical law, they are one. And the Ten Commandments is the foundation of the law. It's the beginning of the law. So, <clears throat> but if the ministry of death, ministry of death, that's what it is. That's what get, God's... Apostle Paul, when he wrote this, he was inspired by the Holy Spirit, right? All Scripture is inspired by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit calls it the ministry of death. He's the one who gave it. Yet Christians are trying to, to put it on people, saying, you've got to live by this. This is a good moral standard you've got to try to do your best to live by. It's called the ministry of death. Churches that are teaching that you've got to live by the Ten Commandments should have a sign on the outside of their church that says the ministry of death. That's a harsh statement, isn't it? <laughs> but that's what it is. It's designed to kill you. The Ten Commandments were given to kill you. Now, what I mean, put you to death, like physically? No, to kill self. To kill self-righteousness. That's what they were designed to do. I was reading last night where Jesus said, do not think, that I, this is uh, Matthew 5, 17, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or to destroy the law, some translations say. But I have not, the law, do not think that I have come to destroy the law and the prophets, but I have come to fulfill, okay? <clears throat> A lot of people under legalism will use that verse and say, hey, Jesus is even saying he didn't get rid of the law, so it's still kind of around. No, he said he came to fulfill, meaning it's forever fulfilled. The law was given so that it could be fulfilled, and it could only be fulfilled by the one who gave it, right? Jesus gave the law. A lot of times we have laws in society, you know, about stealing cars, about, you know, using drugs, different things like that. Are those laws ever going to be fulfilled? Is there ever going to be a point, like, for example, speeding? Is there <laughs> speeding, is there, is there ever going to be a time where if, if the, 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 the police officers say, you know, if, if everyone, if there's one person who can obey the speeding, can obey it, then we won't have to do it anymore. No, no, that's not true. But this law, when someone fulfills it, then that person can take us into grace. And that person is Jesus Christ. It was designed, going back to what I was saying, the, the ministry of death, it was designed to kill you. So if you're preaching something that is, is designed to kill you, you're preaching it as this is what you got to do. All you're doing is, is just continuous death. Now we have the new covenant. <clears throat> so, but if the ministry of death, this is verse 7, written and engraved on stones, was glorious so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which was passing away, how will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? That's what we have now, the ministry of the Spirit, not the ministry of death. Now here at verse 9, now read this. <clears throat> For the ministry of condemnation. So it's two things. It's death and condemnation. That's what the Ten Commandments is. Now I may be really striking some chords here. I, may, I, don't, I don't know for sure. Because didn't a lot of us grow up with the Ten Commandments? And we were told this is what you do, right? I mean, that's, that's my Christian life. But is this, does, everyone, does everyone have the same Bible I have? And it calls them the ministry of death and condemnation. See, that's what God, that's what it was designed to do. <clears throat> if you have not received Christ, the law is what is your sentence. The law is what will judge you and send you to hell. That's what, that's what it's designed to do. It's not designed for you to try to live by. Okay? <clears throat> you to live by. Now we're empowered by the Holy Spirit. For the ministry of condemnation had glory. The ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. 
So that you have one thing. You have the ministry of condemnation and you have the ministry of righteousness. This word ministry means administration or to administer, okay, to give. So <clears throat> the Ten Commandments, what it gives is condemnation. And I have experienced that tenfold. Because every time I tried to live by the Ten Commandments, I would fail, and then what would I feel? Condemnation. I would feel condemned. I didn't live up. I didn't measure up. I didn't do it right. And that's exactly what it was designed to do, to condemn me. Now, and the Apostle Paul calls the Ten Commandments, it says the law is the, the schoolmaster that leads us to repentance. It's designed to bring us to the end of ourself, to kill self-righteousness, to kill self-pride, and to bring us into Christ, which is called the ministry of righteousness. Like I said last week, the law demands righteousness from us, and we can't give it. We can't give it. Grace, what it does is it gives righteousness to us. It provides righteousness for us as a gift. Now we are righteous. Now we don't have to sit here and try to live by a standard. And now that we are righteous in him, now we can live we can actually live above the law. Now, i got to come up with a better terminology for that <laughs> than above the law. But literally, Jesus in the Beatitudes, we went over this last week, in Matthew 5, Jesus, Jesus was talking about the law, the ten, specifically the Ten Commandments. He said, you've heard, you've, you've heard it said, do not commit adultery. He's quoting from the Ten Commandments that was written and engraved on stones. You've heard it said, do not commit adultery. And he transitions, but I say to you, if you look at a woman with lust in your heart, if you look at a woman with lust, you've committed adultery in your heart. He's going above the law. He's taking the standard above the law. What, what's the standard now? It's the heart. The standard now is de deals with the heart. See, under the Ten Commandments, you could not commit adultery, but you have lust in your heart all you wanted. You could not actually physically commit the act of adultery, but yet be full of, man, I wish I, looking at every, every other person's wife or husband or whatever. The law only deals with the flesh, <clears throat> and your flesh can't measure up. But now what grace does is it deals with the heart. Now that you've been given righteousness, now that righteousness is provided for you, now you can live out of his righteousness. And you, can, you will literally... Be, Jesus said, if your righteousness does not exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees, you will by no means inherit the kingdom of God. And the righteousness of the Pharisees, was their righteousness was self-motivated, trying to fulfill the law. But he was saying here, now this righteousness will be, be provided by me. And now you can live holy. <clears throat> A lot of times when I talk about this, especially with friends, different things like that, different people, they get upset with me. When I, when, I, when I quote the word and say that the Ten Commandments is the ministry of death and condemnation, people get upset. Because they think that what I'm trying to do is find a license to sin. I'm just trying to find a loophole to get away with them as much as I can <laughs> and to teach others to do also. No, no. Let me just say a big fat no. That is not it. I, I have experienced the, the trying to live by the law, and what it does is it holds you in bondage to sin more. When someone is teaching the Ten Commandments, you've got to live by this, what you're doing is you're trapping someone in sin. Romans 7. Gosh, let's go there. I, I wasn't planning on going there. Romans chapter 7. <clears throat> Romans 7, 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Certainly not. On the contrary, I would, have not, I would not have known sin except through the law. For I would have not known covetousness unless the law had said, you shall not covet. But sin taking opportunity by the commandment. Just, just think about that for a minute. Sin takes opportunity by the commandment. When you're, when you're sin conscious, you're going to sin. But th people think you need restraint. They think we need to be restrained. 
okay, believers, born again believers. People who are not born again, the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill. If you kill someone, you're going to be stoned. Yes, that's restraint. If you're going to steal, if you're going to commit adultery, we're going to stone you to death. Yeah, that's, that's restraint. But believers, they, teachers, leaders in the body of Christ think that we need to restrain everyone with the law. Keep them in check. But in, in reality, what you're doing is you're not freeing them to be obedient. Grace frees you to be obedient. The law keeps you in bondage to be disobedient. It's so backwards in the body of Christ, and I've lived it for years. It's so damaging, and it's the reason why we're not experiencing so much of what God has for us, what God has already provided for us, because we're constantly, constantly living in condemnation and fear and torment because we're, we think it's all about sin. We think it's all about pleasing God with our self-righteousness, and that's garbage. It's total garbage, okay? God did not create us so we wouldn't sin. Did he create us just so he could have some beings who would be obedient? I'm gonna create them so they won't sin. But that's, that seems to be the message of the church. Stop sinning. Sin's the big issue. Sin is an issue, believe me. I, I mean, I'm not making light of it. But there's, there's something else that needs to be taken hold of, and that's the beauty and majesty of Jesus, and that's what helps us overcome the power of sin. Not focusing on sin. So, uh, <clears throat> but sin, taking opportunity by the commandment. Think about that. That's, so, that's profound. Produced in me all manner of evil desire. It produced all manner of evil desire. For apart from the law, sin was dead. Think about that. That's some heavy stuff. That's some heavy stuff to think about. This isn't going to be just some feel-good message. You're going to have to think about this. If you're, if, if, if you're intrigued right now, or if you're like, oh, I'm just going to get through this Sunday. <laughs> or if you're intrigued, like, this is some pretty deep stuff. Study it out. Romans 7, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Okay? Some meaty stuff. The Holy Spirit will release things to you. I'm still, I'm, I'm still learning on these things. I, I don't claim to have a full revelation on this. <clears throat> I was alive, verse 9, Romans 7, 9. I was alive once without the law, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. There it is again. The Ten Commandments were designed to kill you. People are messing around with, they're playing with fire, teaching the Ten Commandments. <clears throat> now that we're saved, now the commandment is love. Okay? Now the commandment is love. That's the commandment we have now. Loving the Lord, Lord and loving people. And guess what? I've said this many times. When you love, you will not murder. You will not commit adultery. You will, you will not worship other gods. You will not bear false witness. Ten Commandments is all about what you can't do. Grace is all about what you can do, which is love. <clears throat> okay? It, 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 he's, he's, take, he's risen us above the law. He came and fulfilled the law. It's forever fulfilled. It does not have to be fulfilled by us. He forever fulfilled it. Now he can live through us. Now he can, he can live out his righteousness through us. We can do it together now. As before, they could not do it together. God gave them the law. <clears throat> it's like, hey, good luck. <laughs> it's up to them. Now we are empowered by the Holy Spirit to live out of his righteousness. My tracking with everyone here is, everyone like, verse 12. Okay, verse 11, I'll read verse 11. For sin, taking an occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it killed me. Therefore, the law is holy. The commandment holy and just and good. Yes, the law is good. The Apostle Paul called the law good all the time. The law is good. The law, if used lawfully, if the law is used lawfully, it is good. But people, the enemy and religion twist the law. They don't use it for what it was, its created purpose. Verse 13, has then what is good become death to me? Certainly not. But sin, that it might appear sin, was producing death in me through what is good, so that sin through the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. So if someone could, what this is saying, if someone could keep the law, it's 100% pure and perfect. <clears throat> the law is pure and perfect. People are 100% impure and imperfect. Put them together, and what is it, what it, the, the 
The perfect holiness of the law kills the, perf- the imperfect person. Does that make sense? <clears throat> Jesus, when he, when he was fulfilling the law, it was perfect, good, and pure in every way. Because he's perfect, pure, and good in every way. The only, he's the only one that can do it, could do it, and did do it. But when man comes into contact with God's holiness, with God's righteousness, death and condemnation. That's why it's called the ministry of death and condemnation. Okay? I'm tracking with everyone still. We're all on the same page here. And I encourage you, study this out. Please study this out. You're going to have to study it out. If you don't study it out, if you don't make this yours, <clears throat> it will be confusing. This is a spiritual concept. This is not a natural concept. The law and righteousness and... and <clears throat> The Ten Commandments are easily understood by the natural mind. They are. God gave them. The law is spiritual. However, he gave it to natural man. It's very easily understood. That's That's why it's so people gravitate towards it. Because they understand you do this, or if you don't do this, you're going to get punished. If you do this, you'll get blessed. They understand that. We understand that as little two year olds, right? People, however, do not understand that Jesus is giving you his own righteousness, his own perfection. He's literally giving it to you. Are you perfect in the flesh? No, you will not be on earth. Your flesh is going to sin. Now think about this one. I don't even know if I should mention this. (laughs) I don't don't know about it, but think about it. I want you to think about it. I was talking about this with John earlier in the week. Apostle Paul, he said, therefore, it's Romans 7... I think it's Romans 7. Um, oh, gosh. I don't know where it's at. It's in, it's in chapter 7. <clears throat> but he says, I think it's verse 18. Well, I'm going to verse, read verse 18. For, no, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For, uh, Romans, Romans 7, 18, yes. For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do. For the evil I will not to do, that I practice. So, verse 20. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. I've never heard that taught on in my entire life, ever, by anybody. That verse. Not by Andrew Walmack, not by Joseph Prince, not by... Maybe they have, I just haven't heard it. (laughs) Not by anyone I think people are scared to teach on this verse. I'm a little scared to teach on this verse. <laughs> now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. You have a sin nature. <clears throat> Your flesh, the sin nature. However, in Christ, you have a new nature. You have a righteous nature. And that's the nature we can live out of now. Okay? I'm just going to sum things up. I'm going to put this all together in a couple minutes. (laughs) Ten Commandments. They're called the Ministry of Death and Condemnation. You do not have to live by them anymore. (gasps) Now you have a higher standard. Now you can live above them. You've been taken above them in Christ. It's like... like, It's the only term that's coming to mind... It's like when you're under the law, you were working at McDonald's. And, and under grace, it's like you're, you're the president of a major corporation. Okay, that's kind of what it's like. Why go back to a lower standard, the law, trying to, to, to keep this, the Ten Commandments, doing your best to keep them, all the while when you acknowledge their, the law has been fulfilled, now I can live out of his righteousness. And let me tell you, Sin no longer has dominion over you. The power of sin is in the law. The Apostle Paul said the strength of, of, of sin is the law. The strongest point of sin is telling someone not to sin. Okay? So, to sum all this up, the Ten Commandments, the ministry of death and condemnation, if you try to live by them, 
you will be, it'll bring you death and condemnation. <clears throat> now you have the ministry of righteousness. Now you have the ministry of the Spirit, it says. The letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Now you can live out of His righteousness by acknowledging who you are in Christ, acknowledging you've been set free. The law is good, commandments are good, but man is not. <laughs> okay? <clears throat> and then Romans 7. It's important that you acknowledge you do have a sin nature. And even, I think it is in Romans where, he, where the Apostle Paul writes, do not use your freedom or liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. If someone gets this revelation, says, oh, no more Ten Commandments? No more law? I'm just going to sin like crazy. I doubt this person is even saved. <laughs> okay? If that's their goal, if that's their thing, sin was in their heart all along. They, they were just restrained by some law. Grace will expose what's in your heart. If you're exposed, if you if you're, it says you you're, you have been set free to live in grace and in His righteousness, and you will actually live more holy, you will live more holy out of grace than you ever could out of law, out of Ten Commandments, out of. Believe me, okay? Believe me. <clears throat> but if someone gets a hold of grace and says, "Hey, it's party, it's party time," I'm just going to live like the devil. That exposed what was in their heart the whole time. So, <clears throat> this is some heavy stuff, okay? This is some really heavy stuff. And I want you to think about it. Think about it. Meditate on it. Think about the law and righteousness and grace. If you, <clears throat> if you meditate on it and think about it, and ask the Lord about it. What I read to you today is from the Word. Okay, it's from the Bible. Now, if I was just making this up, as Randy's doctrine, and it wasn't in the Word, you'd have every right to say, you're wrong, Randy. I grew up with the Ten Commandments. You're very wrong for this. However, I'm reading from the Word. Now, but make it yours. Make it yours. Make it your revelation. And go deeper than even just Romans. It's all over the New Testament. Jesus, all over. It's, it's all over. This is the theme of the New Testament. It's not some bullet point. It's the theme of the New Testament. The New Covenant. It's a covenant. Okay? So, <clears throat> we're going to continue in this. We're going to break it down even more. I know, that, I know that by calling the Ten Commandments the ministry of death and condemnation, it may seem like I'm against the Ten Commandments, not in the least. When the law is used lawfully, when it's used for what it's supposed to be used for, it, is, it, it works every time. It brings people to Christ. That's what it does. I know I, I use it when I witness to people. When I witness to people who have a certain answer, when they say, I'm going to heaven because I'm a pretty good person, that's when you bust out the law. And every time it breaks them down. Every time. There is no one who can ever say they've never lied. Have you ever built, okay, this is the standard you have to live by to go to heaven. Have you done it? Have you ever taken the Lord's name in vain? I remember, I remember, I remember, I remember talking with my dad one time. I, I, he, he's, he's not a believer. I believe he will be a believer. I believe he will receive Jesus. However, he said, you know, <clears throat> I don't sin. He said that to me. He said, I don't sin. And I said, Dad, have you ever taken the Lord's name in vain? And he's like, yeah. And it's just, just condemnation. He's like, yeah. He felt condemned, and that's exactly what it was meant to do. It's exactly what it was meant to do, to bring people to the end of themselves and to show them you can't provide your own righteousness to fulfill the law, therefore receive his righteousness as a free gift. Man, isn't that good? Isn't that good that he has given us his righteousness? We don't have to give him our righteousness. That's so good. Praise God. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and pray. And we're going to pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation that we understand this. <laughs> Father, thank you. Thank you for giving us the ministry of life and ministry of the spirit. Thank you that the, the, the Ten Commandments shows us we are not righteous. We are not holy. You are righteous and holy, and we just receive your righteousness and holiness freely as a gift provided by Jesus, not by our works or efforts. Thank you, Lord. For anyone here who's dealing with any illness, I just release healing freely. Thank you, Jesus. No sickness has any place in your presence. Life and healing is flowing freely now. Lord, I thank you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation. I think you make sense of this. 
Take what I said, Father, and you make sense of it in, the heart, in our hearts. You release the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. We just thank you, Father. Thank you for your supernatural peace. Peace is just resting on people now. Just resting. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.